In excretion of drugs, we said kidney apart from kidney, there are many other organs by which drug can excrete like liver, uh, sweat and salivary glands, lungs, etc. Among these, the most important route is our kidney or renal excretion, which, upon, which accounts for most of the drug excretion. Apart from that, next important is our liver and feces and there are also various other organs by which drug get excreted. This can be the drug which is coming uh, via secretion into bile as well as the drug which is unabsorbed. So both of these can get excreted via bile and you can know usually the larger molecules of drugs are excreted via this route example uh, the one with more than 300 molecular weight so the unabsorbed fraction as well as this both get excreted via feces breast milk is not an important route of drug excretion but it is important from the point of neonate because the neonate can use this breast milk hence the drug may get uh, the drug reaches the neonate so what you have to know here is uh, almost all drug get excreted via not excreted almost all, all drug will reach milk what you have to know here is the pH of the blood is 7.4 and the pH of the milk is 7 so which is acidic milk side is acidic so if a drug is uh, for example basic so basic drug will reach into milk and now the environment will be what the environment will, it will sense it is sense it as acidic environment so a basic drug in acidic environment what in it will be in which form basic drug in acidic environment will be in ionized state uh, if the drug is in ionized state it is water soluble it gets trapped so what you have to know in drug excretion via breast milk is the basic drugs get trapped into the uh, milk and drug excretion via sweat or saliva can be a route this is important for very few drugs you uh, a question has been asked that which is excreted via sweat or saliva you can remember uh, like uh, you can remember metallic test so by that you can remember heavy metals heavy metals are excreted via sweat and saliva you can also remember like lithium is again a metal potassium iodide and rifampicin so these are the drugs which are excreted via sweat or saliva in lungs what you have to remember is not all drugs uh, get excreted via lung it is only important for in case of anesthetics here gases as well as volatile liquids are excreted via this route volatile liquids like alcohol or the general anesthetics get excreted via this route one more thing is uh, in uh, lungs via lungs the drug which are lipid soluble can get excreted whereas in other routes only the polar drugs were getting excreted uh, only polar drugs were getting excreted now what happens in renal excretion consider uh, this is the drug molecule which reaches glomerula which reaches this glomerulus via afferent arteriole and after reaching glomerulus it gets filtered this is known as GFR we all already know this via glomerular filtration the drug is filtered into the kidney and some drug may remain in this uh, efferent arteriole and it reaches into this uh, peritubular capillaries and it may get secreted here so this is known as secretion and if the drug is i'm using green color for which if the drug is lipid soluble what will happen it may get reabsorbed in distal tubules so this is what is reabsorption So, glomerular filtration plus secretion together minus net reabsorption 
this will lead to this is what is our total renal excretion is this is what is our renal excretion is okay now uh, this secretion is due to uh, transport mechanisms this secretion is due to transport mechanism so this is a active process and reabsorption is simply because it is lipid soluble it gets reabsorbed this is a passive process now which is secreted and which is reabsorbed usually what the body does body tries to retain the endogenous products for example uric acid uric acid is an endogenous product so body will try to reabsorb it and exogenous pro products or exogenous substances like penicillin body tries to secrete it hmm? body is trying to secrete exogenous products and reabsorb endogenous products and you all might be knowing this example probenicid probenicid it blocks the transport of both of this penicillin as well as uric acid so what happens Penicillin is an exogenous product, so its excretion is blocked. Thereby, it leads to increase in penicillin action, increased penicillin activity. And uric acid's reabsorption is blocked, thereby uric acid is excreted. And this can be used in gout. So, proben acid, it is used for both conditions like to... Uh, to stop a drug from being reabsorbed for example uric acid it it stops uric acid to get reabsorbed thereby it is useful in gout it prevents uh, penicillin secretion thereby it is useful in uh, this thing um, in prolonging penicillin's activity so this was about excretion we have finished with excretion